Welcome, my name is Jeff Bartles. I am an infrastructure technical specialist here at Autodesk. Our presentation today is called Project Visualization and Public Outreach. Now, specifically, what we're going to be talking about is taking a civil 3D design, something that we've been working on and modeling, and we are going to look at how we can move that over into InfraWorks and create some compelling visualizations that we could take to a public meeting to try and gain support for our project. Along the way, we are going to be looking at using some of the other tools in the AEC collection. We'll talk about those as we go. A little bit about myself. Uh, I have been working in the civil infrastructure industry for more than 20 years. For a good portion of that time, I was the CAD manager at a civil engineering and consulting firm. Uh, while I was there, I was responsible for the creation of large-scale plan sets and construction documents. I did in-house training and uh, implementation of software. I was also responsible for creating and maintaining CAD standards. I have been teaching Autodesk applications for more than 15 years. Uh, towards the end of that time frame, I worked for an Autodesk channel partner where we were we specialized in doing civil 3D implementations. For the last four years, I have been working for Autodesk. I serve on the uh, Northeast Territory team where I do pre-sales demonstrations and uh, support and on occasion training. Uh, as part of Autodesk, I contribute to a blog called Civil Immersion. You can see the URL here on screen. We post uh, Autodesk infrastructure tips and tricks at least two or three a week we have been for the last year and a half. So just an overview of today's presentation. We are going to be visualizing a detailed design. We're going to be moving that from Civil 3D into InfraWorks. Along the way, we will be looking at how we can add landscaping and furniture. Furniture is kind of a fancy word for people, cars, street signs, things like that. I'm also going to show you how you can model custom content in the event some of the items, you know, specific items you are looking for aren't available in the InfraWorks library. Uh, once we get our model in, in a nice visual state, we're going to look at how we can create um, exhibits that we can take to a meeting. They, these would include still images, animations, kind of like a fly through animation we'll put together today. Uh, we're also going to talk about how we can create low cost VR. Many times when you hear the concept of virtual reality, you think, well, that's got to be expensive or it's got to be difficult or it's got to, you know, involve getting additional hardware. We're going to look at how we can take our InfraWorks model and view it in 3D using a smartphone without any extra, you know, software or anything on the phone. We'll uh, wrap up with a summary and then I will be addressing questions about the session after the session is over. My goals for today, everything will be uh, a win if uh, I, what I want to do is give you exposure to the Autodesk AEC collection. We're going to be looking at several of the applications in the collection from an infrastructure perspective. The applications that we look at, uh, we're going to be talking, you know, looking at just a subset of what these things can do. Uh, each of the application that we look at, you know, each, each application that we cover today could easily be a, a presentation all by itself. So just going to be looking at uh, some of the high points, just showing you some workflows that are possible. Along the way, we will be, I'm hoping that I can uh, convey some of the business benefits of using these tools. And then uh, the final goal is to make sure that all of your questions are addressed. This will be a PowerPoint free zone. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of PowerPoint. I would rather work in the software. I have found that's uh, more impactful rather than uh, showing screenshots and telling you what the software does. I'd rather actually get in there and show you. So that's, that's what we're going to be doing today. For that reason, uh, I've got the uh, what to expect slide. I just want to mention that there is a significant amount of uh, internet traffic being generated by today's virtual event, and we are all sharing the same bandwidth. So uh, for that reason, you may see some pixelization when objects are being moved around on screen. Um, I, I apologize for that. I'm going to try and keep that in mind and try and stay still uh, as much as possible. But I want to explain to you why you may be seeing that if in fact you are. And um, it's just uh, it's a byproduct of, of trying to push the envelope as to uh, as to what we can get away with in this virtual environment. So with that, we are going to go ahead and get started with the live demonstration. Let me take this down. And I am going to start out here in Civil 3D. Let's maximize this. On my screen, I've got a Civil 3D model, and this represents a proposed roadway and park design. You can see that my roadway model has been created as a corridor. 
Let me zoom in here. I've also got a park site that I'm working on. This is actually a project that some of my colleagues and I have been passing back and forth. Each of us adds a piece to it. Uh, so somebody else did the corridor here. It was my job to go through and model this parking lot area. I have created this parking lot using feature lines. Uh, so it's already uh, established in 3D. I've then uh, gone through and created a top surface for this. Let's take a look at that. I'll go to the Prospector tab here. And then I'm going to right click on my surface and I will choose surface properties and we'll just choose the triangles only surface style here. I will then select the surface and we'll take a look at it. Let me go to object viewer and I'll maximize this on screen and I'm paying mind to the possibility of pixelization there. I just want to show you that, you know, with that surface, we can see the relief of the curb and gutter and the, the small islands there. We can also kind of see the grading through here that's going to allow the drainage for this parking lot. So that design is finished. Let me close this. And I'm going to hide this surface again. Let's just do that. It's still selected. I'm going to go to the properties palette here and I'll set this to no display. Let me back up. Um, also notice that I'm viewing this design on top of the Bing imagery that comes along with Civil 3D. Um, I, you know, I'm not really not, I'm leveraging this for uh, visualization purposes only. So you can see how this project fits in the context of the real world. So um, what I'm going to do uh, is I, I want to start, uh, we'll say I'm to a point where I want to start moving this design into InfoWorks to create visualizations to take to a meeting. So I'm, I'm at this point. Uh, I've showed you the surface that I've created for this parking lot. Um, I have already created a surface for these corridors. I've created some additional grading surfaces in here. And um, I have saved those as I've, I've kind of pasted them all together into this one big surface called Composite Top. This represents my, my overall top surface for the entire project. And I'm going to start in moving data over into InfoWorks. I'm going to start by moving that surface over. And the way I would move that surface, if I go to output here, I can choose export to land XML. And then you can see all the things that we can export. I'm going to clear the list here. And here's where I can export that, uh, that composite top surface. I would just select it here and then I could come down and click OK to export that via land XML. Now I've already done that. Let me close this. I would like to jump over to InfraWorks. Here I have the basically the starting point of my model. This is maybe we'll say this was created from Model Builder, and I have my my USGS topography. Uh, we'll say that maybe I've got some survey grade existing topography through here. All right, so the surface has been augmented in that respect. I have um, aerial photo. I, I've deleted the. Uh, like the GIS roads, I really don't need those because I'm going to be swapping those out with my proposed roadways. So those would kind of be getting in the way. So uh, I've kind of uh, removed those for now. Let me pan this over. I would like to import that surface. So I'm going to bring up Windows Explorer. I'll jump into my content folder here. And in my land XMLs folder, I'll take that XML surface that I saved out and I'll just drag and drop this into the InfraWorks environment. That's one of the nice things about our applications. If a particular file format can live inside the application, you don't have to know the uh, import tool. You can just physically drag and drop it into the application. And we'll see that uh, several times today using that drag and drop functionality. Now, when it comes in, I just have to tell InfraWorks what it is. Now, it knows since it's land XML, it's going to be a terrain. I was going to choose ch close and refresh here and it will take and, and regenerate my model. It will also take that land XML data and it will um, swap out uh, the, the surface in the model. You know, in the, the, when they overlap, uh, the, the area of the proposed surface then will be the, the one that's current on top. So we'll let this process. It's cleaning up here. And as soon as we can see that on screen, I'm going to zoom in. And we'll take a look. I'm going to be uh, going to be mindful of the of the screen movements here. Let me just double click here real quick, and then I'll back up a touch. This way, you can see the relief of the uh, curb and gutter now. So the the for the proposed surface. Let me pan this over a little bit. Let me stop there, and we'll kind of let that catch up. Here, I'm hoping you can see the relief of that parking lot as well. We can kind of see the islands here too. 
So I've moved the proposed or I've swapped out from an elevational standpoint. I've, I've swapped out the elevational data in this InfraWorks model. So now it's reflecting my proposed design. Let me back up and I'll kind of center this on screen and we'll jump back over to Civil 3D. So the next thing I'd like to do is export my geometry. All right, we'll do that. I'm going to hide my background image. I don't need to see that. So we'll go to the geolocation tab and I'll just turn the map off. And I am going to freeze my corridor. Let me choose freeze here and I will select that. Perfect. So even though this corridor is a 3D model, uh, it's made up of these feature lines that are that are 3D line strings. My parking lot is made up from these 3D line strings. Let's zoom in. If I hover over these, I can see this one represents the edge of my walk. I've got some here that represent the uh, the curb and gutter and my, my edge of pavement. So all of these feature lines were extracted from that corridor model. Uh, and then, you know, my parking lot, these feature lines were, were created automatically, didn't have to be, <clears throat> or they were created as part of the design, so they didn't have to be extracted. So basically, I've, I've just got a bunch of feature lines here. I'm going to open another drawing. Let me jump over here. So what I did, I took those linear items and I just, you know, had to close up the ends. If I hover over this one for a second, we can see that one represents my concrete. Uh, I closed up the ends there and I've got that as a polyline. I've also got a polyline that represents my uh, edge of pavement or my asphalt. So I went through, took me maybe 10 minutes to, uh, to convert these things into nice uh, closed shapes that I could then leverage or used to, to stylize my InfraWorks model. So what we'll do, I'll show you how I, I get these out. I've got a concrete shape here. We would use a command called map export. We're going to be leveraging some of the map 3D functionality in Civil 3D. Map export allows me to export my geometry to a shape file. You can see that happens to be the default here. Maybe I would like to call this concrete. I'll click OK, and let me drag this over. I would like to export a polygon. I'm going to select that manually. I'll grab this concrete one, and I'll press Enter. Now, when I export this, if I wanted to, if there was any data associated with this, I could I can include that data as well. The, uh, the data, the attribution, that's not going to be necessary in this case. I just want it for visualization purposes. We'll go to the Options tab, and I'm going to do one more thing. I'll say Treat Closed Polylines as Polygons. In a shape file, a closed area is considered a polygon, so that'll take care of everything for me. I would then come down and click OK to save that shape file. Now, I've already done that, so in this case, I'm going to close out of the dialog box here, and I'll hit Cancel. <clears throat> Uh, I have also gone through and exported some of the other shape, uh, other closed areas as shape files. So once we do that, let me jump back over to InfraWorks. So where we left off, our terrain was taken care of. Let's bring in some of the geometry. I'm going to go back to Windows Explorer here, and I will jump up a directory. Let's go into Shapes, and I'll go into this folder called Session. I'm going to grab this shape file called Concrete Overall and I'll just drag and drop that into the InfraWorks environment. When it comes in, I need to tell InfraWorks what this is. It's a coverage area. And then coming over here under Style, I can click the pencil and say what I want this to look like. I want it to look like concrete. Let me click OK, and then I'll choose Close and Refresh. And what it'll do is bring that geometry in, and it's essentially going to stylize my proposed surface in that area to look like concrete. So when this refreshes, we will see the difference on screen. There we go. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and we'll orbit this. Now, when you think of exporting concrete, you may be wondering, you know, man, you could have, I mean, why didn't you uh, export all of these sidewalks as little slivers in the little curb and gutter? I mean, wouldn't you have to export those as slivers? No, I, you see, I exported a bounding shape and then I can bring in the pavement now and set that right on top. We have the ability of doing like a, like a draw order. This prevents us from having to create a whole ton of shapes to, to replicate our design. Let me go back to my Windows Explorer here, and we'll take the asphalt overall shape. Let me drag that in and drop it. Once I drop it, I will select that this is going to be a coverage area, and then I'll click the pencil, and I want this one to look like asphalt. There are a ton of materials in here, 
So asphalt's the one I need right now. I will select that. And then once this closes and refreshes, we will see uh, that asphalt material is now sitting on top of the, uh, the concrete. There we go. Perfect. So you can see very simple. Now it's, I can, you know, I can start to see now the, the definition of the curb and gutter. Uh, I would simply bring in additional shapes now for things like striping and stuff like that. I am going to bring in one more. Uh, I'm going to bring in the uh, material that represents, or a shape that represents the grass areas. In Civil 3D, the edge of my proposed surfaces, I can extract that boundary. That's, that's easy enough. That shows me the limits of my grading. I could also take, uh, viewing the Bing imagery in Civil 3D, I could uh, trace any areas that are going to be significantly changed. You know, for instance, uh, this area here with the, with the trees and the sidewalk, maybe I'd like to redo this. So I could export that as a grass area just to kind of uh, clean up the imagery over here in, in InfraWorks and give us a, a clean slate. In fact, if I back up, we're going to have a large park site over here. And you can see that, you know, some of the stuff is going to be uh, removed. So I'd like to uh, cover that with uh, with grass for right now so that it looks new. Once again, let me go back to Windows Explorer here. Now, I've already done that over in Civil 3D. I, I traced the grass areas and created this shape file. Let me drag this in. Same workflow. It's going to be a coverage area and I want it to look like grass. I'll click OK and then I'll close and refresh. This will process. And when this comes up, you can see that I don't have to be, uh, you know, 100% perfect as I do my tracing. Uh, it's because, because of that draw order, I can, uh, I can, you know, rely on overlap of objects. As I pan this over, you can see that this is now a clean grass area. Although you can see the grass is kind of sitting on top of some of these uh, shapes that are already here. Not a problem. I can control the stacking order of the coverages. Let me open my InfraWorks menu here and I'll choose surface layers. I can then choose that grass overall shape and I can use these arrows. I'll just push that down so it's beneath the concrete and then I'll click OK. It will then go through and reprocess the stacking order. And we'll see that these now look acceptable. There we go. That looks good. So my workflow at this point would be to continue uh, going through, bringing in additional content. And rather than watching me do that, I am going to load a different proposal. Proposals in InfraWorks represent um, various stages or, or alternates of a design. Rather than creating multiple copies, you can create proposals. Each proposal then is, is, um, it, it's only saving the delta. It's saving the difference between that proposal and the uh, and the original model that it was created from. So if I flip to this new proposal, you can see what it would look like if we spent a little bit more time bringing in additional shapes. I've got shapes for the striping here in the parking lot and in the uh, roundabout. I've got additional sidewalks here, stop bars, things like that. All this content was created from Civil 3D. And you may be wondering, well, you know, if the design changes, I mean, how difficult would it be to make the uh, the transition or, you know, make the updates? Well, uh, the, the geometries in Civil 3D, if I simply export that as uh, new shape files, I, I would just overwrite the shape files that are already there. You can see that they're kind of highlighted here. Uh, these shape files, they're still, it's still maintaining a link to those. So I would just have to overwrite the original shape file with the new geometry. And then I would come over here and select the one that I'm interested in. And then I could come up and choose uh, refresh. Uh, to refresh that data source and bring in the latest version. So <clears throat> now that I have come this far, if I orbit this around, we can see there's my, my park site there. I've got a, a soccer field here. I've got a playground that I've laid out there. I'd like to start adding some uh, embellishments to this model, some uh, accoutrements, if you will. I am going to, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to add some trees. We'll do that by opening the InfraWorks menu. And then I'm going to come down to the draw tool and you can see the number of things that we can draw here. Okay. Just a, a bunch of different types of objects. I'm going to cho choose stand of trees. And then when this comes up, I will select a tree. I'll go ahead and grab this one for right now. And then I will double click to place that in the model. And then let me see if I can close some of this stuff up here. 
Let me zoom in. We'll kind of orbit that around and I'll press escape and we'll give that a chance to catch up if it has to. So when I drop that tree in the model, you can see it's just a matter of double clicking and it's there. Uh, this mod or this tree then has these grips on the side. I can click and hold and I can adjust its rotation. I can use this grip at the top to adjust its height. I can then use this gizmo. If I click the little red pad here, I can move this tree around and place it exactly where I need it. Let me press escape to deselect that and I'm going to pan this over. So I placed one tree in the model. I'd like to place some additional trees. Let me choose stand of trees again, and I'll choose a different type of tree. We'll grab the yellow one this time. Now, instead of double clicking to place one tree, I am going to click to create. It's a little hard to see on screen here, but I'm creating a, a shape or an area. I'll take and define that area, and then I will double click when I'm finished. And InfraWorks will place trees randomly within that closed boundary. Let me zoom out just a little and I'll press escape. You can see that when it places the trees there, I've got a slider. This controls like the density of the trees in that uh, shape, in that within that shape. Now, maybe I'd like these to be quite heavy in here. I could, you know, the farther I drag this to the right, when I release, you can see I get more trees inside that boundary. Um, oop, I apologize. There we go. If I select that uh, grouping of trees, I can then use this grip to adjust their height as a group. I could adjust their density back down if I want to. I could also select the trees individually. And I, I have this access to the same grips that we have if we insert a single tree. So very easy to uh, import content. Now I am going to take these trees out. Let me hit delete here. We'll take those out. What if, you know, I, I could go through and I could take and, and populate this thing with the different trees and different species and sizes and stuff that I need for my, for my land plan. Or um, I could make things a little bit easier. What if what if we had a, a landscape architect working on this project and they designed the uh, tree layout, you know, species, heights, drip lines, things like that. And they were able to give us that data as a shape file. I could leverage that shape file and the attribution on those trees to uh, to drop those right into this model and take care of everything in just a matter of a couple seconds. Let's try that. I'm going to orbit this around and then. I am going to jump back into my content folder here. Let's go to shapes. We'll go to session. I've got a folder here called trees. So let's, let's assume we got this proposed trees shape file from a landscape architect. I'm just going to drag this in. And when it comes in, I'm going to tell InfraWorks what this file represents. These are trees. And then I'm going to go to source and I'll say that when this comes in, I want to drape these trees on the surface. Finally, I'm going to go to the table tab. Since the shapefile has attribution that, that represents like the species and the height and the drip line, I want to use that attribution to stylize these trees. So I'm going to come down to manual style. Let me open this up here. We can see the attributes that are coming along with the shape file. I would like the style driven by the species attribution. This way, an oak tree looks like an oak tree. A maple tree looks like a maple. Let me go to the scale here, scale Z. I want that driven by the height. That way the tree heights will measure what was collected in the, or what the um, uh, landscape architect came up with. And then scale Y and scale X, I want these driven by the drip line attribution. When I'm finished, I'll come down and choose close and refresh. And it'll place those trees at the appropriate location with the appropriate species with the with the appropriate height and drip line so i can populate this model in just a matter of seconds now i did it with proposed data there's there's nothing to say that you can't do it with existing too if if your surveyor could take and provide a shape file that has the tree locations and uh, the height and the drip line if, if that attribution was was collected or if it would be helpful in a visualization uh, that that information could be collected and they wouldn't even have to collect all the species what if they did just uh, deciduous and conifer? You could bring that into InfraWorks and uh, and very quickly, um, you know, flesh out an existing visualization and have accurate trees in there. So just wanted to show you that that was possible. So now that I've got some trees in here, let's add some other content. I'm going to orbit around. 
and I'm going to zoom in quick on the stop bar here, and then we'll hesitate for a second and let that catch up if it has to. I will then, uh, I, want, I want to insert a stop sign. I've got a stop bar here, so let's, let's go ahead and insert a stop sign with that. I'm going to go back to the draw menu, and I will choose City Furniture. Now, there are probably more than a thousand items in here, you know, 3D content that you can pull from this library and insert into your InfraWorks model. Uh, it has a nice search box at the top. I'm just going to type the word stop. There we go. Perfect. I've got a stop sign. Let me select that. And then I will double click to place that in the model. If I press escape, you can see that I've got the same uh, editing controls that we have on a tree. So, you know, the nice thing about InfraWorks, if you know how to insert one thing, you can insert everything because they all work the same way. Let me orbit this around. Let me back up. There we go. I'd like to insert another stop sign by this stop bar. So let me go back to City Furniture. And you can see since I was uh, grabbing a stop sign, it's now showing me when it goes back to the library, it's showing me other objects that are within that same category. I'm going to grab the stop sign again. Let me double click to place that. I'll press escape and then I can click and hold and we can kind of spin this around so it's facing the right direction. Let's add a car. I'm going to go back to city furniture and in the search box, I'm going to start typing vehicle. And if I drag this up and down, you can see the, you know, the number of vehicles that we have here. Let's drop the, uh, the blue compact car. I'll select that and then I will double click and we'll place that in the intersection. And when I hit escape, you can see the exact same uh, tools that we have here for the car that we have for everything else. One more thing, let's drop some people in. I'm going to bring up the library again and I'll choose, I'll just start typing people. And if I drag this up or down, you can see that we've got a lot of options here. We'll click this one called man one and we'll kind of put him next to the car. You know, maybe he's having some, uh, some difficulty with the engine and now he's standing waiting for a, maybe waiting for a tow truck, maybe. Okay. Very easy to go through and populate uh, our InfraWorks model with content that comes in InfraWorks. So knowing that, knowing that I'm going to flip to another visualization. I'll choose this one called final visualization. And from here, we will see a representation of the model. Um, after a bunch of items have been added. If I back up, let me, I apologize for, for the uh, pixelization here. If we have that, if I back up, you can see this, I've added cars, I've got uh, trees. I've, um, it, there's even little sample buildings in the library. If you want to kind of lay out some existing buildings to try and, you know, um, visualize some of the existing conditions. Uh, I'm going to pan this over. Let me, I'm going to double click on my playground to try and jump over here quick. There we go. And then I'll back up and we'll let that catch up. So here I've got a playground and it's got uh, several little components on it. These are all 3d parts. Um, you know, maybe when you're fleshing out your model, there's uh, objects that are so specific to your model that you can't find them in the library. Well, uh, InfraWorks allows us to import 3d content using several standard file formats. Some of the stuff you can grab, you know, online, you know, freely available online. Uh, it'll import SketchUp files. It'll import, um, 3ds max, you know, the OBJ file format, DAE FBX. I can insert uh, files that came from AutoCAD. Let's say in this case that, uh, there's a specific bench that I'd like to use with this playground. And maybe the bench isn't available in the library. If I have the AEC collection, you know, in addition to InfraWorks, I, I can, you know, get into AutoCAD and I can draw this bench. I'm going to jump over to AutoCAD. And here we've got, you know, a nice cross section drawn in 2D of that uh, bench geometry. Since I'm going to be working in 3D, I'm going to open the workspace menu and I'll choose 3D modeling. So this puts me in my, my 3D modeling environment. And we'll then hold my shift key in the mouse wheel and I'll kind of orbit this up. There we go. I would like to uh, convert this geometry into a 3d model. Let's look at how quickly we can do that. We'll go to the home tab and I'm going to start. I'll take the geometry here that represents the legs and I'll extrude it. I'll use the extrude command and I'll select these shapes. 
and I'll pull this up a half a foot. So I just extruded those. Let me orbit this a little bit. I'm also going to change the visual style here to conceptual. There we go. Now those objects reflect light. So you can see that they're, they're solid objects now. now. They are still separate. These are two you know, distinct solid objects. I'd like to fuse them together. I'll do that by using the union command. And I'll just select both of these and I'll press enter. That just gives me one object. So I have one leg now for my bench. Let's create the other leg. I'll choose copy and I'll grab the leg there and I'll pick it up. And maybe we'll copy this straight up a distance of eight feet. We'll say this bench is going to be around eight feet long. If I zoom out now, we can see that other leg kind of floating up in the sky there. Uh, these little rectangles near the leg, these are going to be boards. I'm going to extrude these to create the boards that represent the bench. So let's choose extrude and I'm going to select those rectangles. We'll extrude these up a height of nine. So they're slightly longer than the legs. Perfect. Uh, and then lastly, I'd like to kind of center these boards on the legs. Um, to do that, I'm going to change the visual style to X-ray just so I can see through these. And then I'm going to say move and I'll select the boards. I will pick them up from the midpoint between two points. I'll grab the outside corner here and here, and I'll place these to the mid between two points. I'll grab the end point here and down there. There we go. I'm trying to be mindful of the, uh, Pixelization, I don't want to move this around too much. So there we go. I've got my bench in position. Let's uh, lay this down now. I will select the bench. And then I can use this gizmo to rotate this 90 degrees. And then lastly, I want to do one more thing. Um, if, if we look right here, we can see the 0, 0 coordinate. We can see where that's located. That represents the insertion point of this uh, bench. This bench is going to be a lot, a lot like a block. So I want to kind of center the bench on that zero, zero coordinate. So I'm holding it from a predictable location. I'm going to do that by using the move command and I'll select the bench and I'm going to pick it up from the mid between two points and I'll grab these outer corners and I'm going to place this to zero comma zero. Perfect. Let me orbit that. That looks good. I'll zoom in. And then I'm going to change the visual style here to realistic. Uh, Cause I'm going to do one more thing. I want to add materials to this. Uh, AutoCAD comes with more than a thousand custom photographic uh, photo reel materials. Uh, so I can leverage those. I can apply the materials on this geometry and then it will, uh, those materials will then be used in InfraWorks. If I go to the visualize tab, I can choose materials browser. And uh, kind of like the library in InfraWorks, you know, it's, I mean, it's huge. It's got a lot of stuff in here. I can use this search box to find what I'm looking for. I'm going to type concrete and then I'll grab the concrete category. Let's come down. I'll choose a flat broom gray. I'll drag this into the drawing. And then once it's in the drawing, I'll drag and drop it onto these components. Perfect. We'll clear the search. Next, I'd like to paint these boards red. So in the search box, I'll type R-E-D, and then I will go looking maybe in the plastic category for materials containing that text string. Here's one called Smooth Red. I'll drag this into the drawing, and then I can drag and drop this onto a board. Now I can do that one at a time, or uh, I can select the boards first, and then I can come over and click the material. Perfect. Let's clear that out. And then I can close the materials browser. So there's my bench. Okay. Just made in a couple minutes using AutoCAD to use this or to leverage this in InfraWorks. I'm going to open the application menu and I will come down and choose. I will come down and choose, um, export and then I'll choose FBX. I'm going to use that FBX. FBX is kind of like a universal 3D file format. I'm going to call this bench. In fact, uh, the, the default here is fine. We'll save this to my desktop as bench. Perfect. I'm going to export selected entities. We will export the objects and the materials, and we want the materials embedded. Let me go ahead and click OK. Perfect. So that bench has been exported. Let me jump out of AutoCAD at this point. 
We won't save changes to this drawing. And here in InfraWorks, let me collapse some of this stuff. Uh, to put in that bench, we'll go to the Windows Explorer, and I'm going to go to the desktop. Let's find that bench that we just created. I'll drag and drop this into the application. And you can see that this object is coming in just like an object that was in the library. I want to drop this in a city furniture. If I go to the 3D model tab, we can see the bench right there. Let me go to the geolocation tab. I would like to place this using interactive placing. I'm holding that bench at my cursor. I'll just uh, double click to place that in the model and I'll choose close and refresh. So you can see if we, if we do need uh, custom content. We can create that content ourselves using AutoCAD. We can uh, pull that content from online if we want to, uh, you know, search for it there. Um, if you have the AC collection, there's another tool in there called Formit. Uh, Formit will allow you to create uh, 3D models as well. Uh, let's do one more thing. I'd like a second bench. Now that I have this first one, I could select it. I could hit, I could hit Control C to copy it to my clipboard, and then I could hit Control V to paste, and then I'll double click and I can put in one more. So now I have two benches. There we go. I could take and rotate that so it's a little bit straighter. We could take and pull that out. There we go. That'll that'll work for now. So real quick, I was able to go through and create some custom content. So now we'll say, I've got my proposed design over here. It's fleshed out. I've got everything looking nice. I want to start creating visualizations for my meeting. Uh, one way we can create visualizations in InfraWorks is by creating bookmarks. A bookmark, a bookmark is a saved um, view, if you will. If I open the bookmark menu here, I've got one called um, Soccer Field. If I click, you can see it takes me right to that view. I've got another bookmark called Proposed Park. If I select that, you can see it takes me to that view. So if I wanted to create a custom bookmark, all I have to do, let me zoom in. I'll kind of center my view there and I'll say I'd like to save this. I can then open my bookmark menu and choose Add. And then we can give this a name. We'll just call this Playground Overhead. And I'll press Enter. From now on, no matter where I am in the model, no matter where I am in the model, let me just pan this over just a little bit. If I open up the bookmark menu, I can choose that bookmark and go right back to that saved location. So, you know, if, you, if you've ever created paper or printed exhibits to take to a meeting, you know, sometimes you don't always print everything that you need. Uh, you could, you could use the InfraWorks model as an exhibit at the meeting. And if, uh, you know, if a, Somebody asks a question about a particular component or phase of the project, you can take and, and, and load a, a bookmark and go right to that space. The nice thing is you have the entire model with you um, when you give the presentation. So bookmarks are a, a fantastic tool. Next, we'll, we'll look at how we can create still images. Maybe we'd like to extract some images to put in a PowerPoint presentation, for instance, or, or to print you know, as a poster to put on an easel. I am going to leverage the bookmark tool. Let me back this up and we'll, we'll choose this one called Prop Park. Maybe I'd like to create a still image of the park area. Uh, to do that, uh, first thing I want to do is, is um, ensure that, you know, maybe the time of day or the, uh, or the, uh, the uh, date, you know, I could go through and adjust some of the properties of the environment itself. If I click the presentation button here, I can come down and choose sun and sky. I can then drag the, uh, let's drag time. You can see I can take and drag the, the time of day. This, this is a nice tool for doing shadow studies, by the way, as long as we're doing that, as long as we're dragging this, I could also drag the date so I can get the, uh, the sun and the, and the shadows to be exactly what I need. Uh, you know, if they, if they were very specific for a date and time, if I push this up, I can adjust things like um, cloud cover and uh, wind speed. Okay, if I want to adjust the uh, the environment, let me drag this down. We'll drag the cloud cover down a little bit here too, and I'll close that. Uh, I'm going to jump back to my bookmark. To save this as a still image here in the presentation menu, 
I am going to choose Create Snapshot. I would like to save this to my desktop. We'll call it uh, Snapshot. In fact, let me look out here and see if I have one on here out here already. No, I do not. Perfect. So we'll call that Snapshot, and I am going to export this at a resolution, because I can enter whatever re resolution I want, we'll do 1280 by 720 pixels. So it's going to be kind of a standard um, HD, low HD resolution. And I'll click Save. And when it creates that, you can see it just, I mean, it takes a second to do that. Let me bring up Windows Explorer, and we'll go out to the desktop here. And I will right-click on that snapshot, and we'll open that up with Photoshop and take a look. Now, when this comes up, we can see the image. You know, at first glance, you may look at that and think, well, you know, you, I could have done a screenshot. Okay, that, yeah, that's something I could have done. The, uh, the, the nice thing about doing the snapshot tool is it eliminates all of the interface items. So it gives me a nice clean view of my model. This would now be suitable, you know, this resolution might be uh, suitable for a web page or some kind of online viewing. As I click the zoom button to zoom in here, you can see that uh, very quickly we start to see artifacts. Um, and that's, that's just a product of the resolution that we exported. Uh, the nice thing, let me minimize this. The nice thing about the snapshot tool is I can choose my, whatever resolution I'd like to use. Let me go back to create snapshot. So maybe I'd like to do a really high resolution image for a magazine ad or something like that. I could do 12,800 by 7,200 pixels and I'll click save. So now it's exporting this. At, uh, at 10 times the resolution, and you might think that would take a long time. You could see it, it happened rather quickly there. Let's go back to Photoshop here, and I'll choose Open. Let's grab the new snapshot that was created. I'll click to open that up. And at first glance, it looks uh, you know very similar to what we had before, but if I start to zoom in, you can see that it, it retains its sharpness. I can, I can get in here pretty tight, all the way down to where I can just about read the license plate on that vehicle. You know, and if we really wanted to read it, we could take and jack up the resolution even more. Uh, so you have complete control over the resolution of the images that you extract. Uh, it just depends on purpose, what you want to use them for. Let me close this. Uh, the next thing I'd like to talk about is creating um, animation. InfoWorks makes it very easy to create a like a fly-through animation of your project. I am going to load a bookmark again. We'll load this one of the soccer field. Now, when you first hear the you know concept of animation, you think, well, that you may be thinking that's time consuming, or you know, it's, that's going to be it's going to require a steep learning curve. You can create animations very easily in InfraWorks. Let me go to the presentation menu here again, and I'll choose Storyboard Creator. This is the tool that we use to, to build an animation. An animation is essentially uh, a chaining together of multiple animated cameras. So let me, I'm going to open this menu here. We can see the, uh, the pre-made animated cameras that it comes with. I'll choose Add Orbit Animation. And you can see that adds an item to my storyboard. Uh, it's selected because it's, you know, bounded in red there. If it's selected, we can see the items properties over here to the right. I can also see a play button that I can use to play that item. <clears throat> if I press play, we'll see it's doing exactly what it says. It's uh, rotating to the left or orbiting to the left 45 degrees. I'd like to go a little bit further. I'll choose 180 degrees and then I'll click play again. I apologize for pixelization. You, you get the idea of what it's what it's doing here. It's it's now orbiting 180 degrees, although the duration is pretty quick. We can see it's doing it over three seconds. If I want to increase the duration, when this item is selected, I can click this up arrow. Each time I click, it's going to increase it by a second. You may have noticed that as I click this, it's making the item longer here in the storyboard. If I click and hold on the edge of this, I can manually drag this out wherever I like. Storyboard also contains a playhead showing us where we are in the overall animation. If I click and hold on that, I can drag this back and forth to scrub uh, through the animation. Let me hit play to play this again. And we can see that it's now uh, doing that 180 degree orbit across a seven second time frame. So this is the extent of my animation to this point. Uh, now I could just add another camera movement. If I open this menu, I could choose Add Crane Animation. 
And let's take a look at what we get by default. I'll just click play. From here, it's going to crane up, just like what we see there. I'd like to crane down instead. I can see it's going to crane down about 108 feet. Let's click play. I like that better. So we orbit around, then we come down. At this point, I'd like to fly through the model. I'm going to do that by loading a path or creating a path. Uh, I'll choose Add Camera Path Animation. And InfoWorks basically saved my camera location here. I can now manipulate my view in the model. Let me just orbit this up a little bit, kind of like we're moving towards the playground. And then I'll come down and click this Add button, and it'll save the, uh, the location of my, or the current camera location. It's saving these as keyframes. Let me drag this over. I apologize for pixelization here. Let me click Add. Let me do a couple more. We'll kind of head up the hill here. We'll do one more, and then we'll kind of wrap things up by centering here on the roundabout. Let me click Add. So while that cleans up here in the storyboard, we can see that we've got the, the third item. This item is made up of five different keyframes. And, uh, you know, if I click play, let me do that. If I click play, despite the pixelization, we can see what's happening. InfraWorks is threading a camera path through all of those saved keyframes to create a nice smooth animation from one side of the project to the other. If I want to adjust the duration of this, um, I could take and select when this item is selected, I can choose keyframe one. And if I drag down here, I can assign a set speed. You can see currently it's moving through that at 50 miles an hour. I'd like to do it at maybe 30 miles an hour. And I'll press enter and you can see how that uh, affects my, my storyboard. So let me drag this back to the beginning. I'm going to double click to put, my, put a, to put the playhead back here and let's just create a quick title so we can see what this would look like. Uh, I can add titles and captions using the icons here. Let me choose add a new title. And you can see it creates kind of like a, it's a new item here in the captions and titles row. I'll drag this up and I can type in my title here. I'll say uh, proposed roadway improvements and park site. There we go. And currently it's, it's I got a black background. I could take and make that transparent if I want to. If I drag this down now, if I click play here, this play button will play the entire animation, not just the, uh, the individual items. So I can play and stop. We can see the overall animation currently is about 30 seconds. So if I click play, you can see there's my title. You can see the duration of that title. It just faded out. Okay. Let me, I'm going to stop it at this point. So we could go through and we could add titles and we could add captions uh, to, to make the animations even more compelling. If I want to save this animation, I'm going to come down and click this export button. This is how I can save this animation to a file such that I could uh, import it into a PowerPoint or maybe view it on a web page. When the dialog box comes up, I can select my desired encoder, video encoder. I can choose the folder and the file name I'd like to use for this file. I can determine the number of frames per second. I can output this at a custom resolution if I want to. I can even export a portion of the storyboard out to an animation. When I click record, it would save that to disk. So let me close this. And then I'm going to close this. Let's talk about one more concept. Um, you know, it's one thing to, to show a, a still image. It's another thing to show an animation. We can also, with, uh, with these tools, with the AC collection, I can create low-cost virtual reality. I can physically put a stakeholder inside this model such that they can see it in a 3D environment. So what we'll do... I apologize here. Let me do this quick. It's kind of like ripping off a Band-Aid. just going to go here real quick. And we'll let that uh, kind of clean up there. What I'm doing is uh, now that I've got this model and it's, it's ready to go, I've, I've zoomed out so that I can see it from a top view here. I am going to export this model such that I can open it up in Navisworks. Navisworks is where we'll create the VR experience. Uh, Navisworks is part of the collection. Let me just go to the settings tab here and I'll choose export 3D model. I want to export this using a bounding box. I will click. And then I'll come down and I can double click 
uh, to represent the area of the model that's going to be my virtual reality experience. Now, I, I'm not grabbing the whole thing. I, I suppose I could if I wanted to. You're just basically you're picking the amount of the model that you want to see uh, in that VR environment. So if I double click here, uh, I can choose the location where I'm uh, saving the model. You can see it's being exported as FBX, that, that universal file format. I can export this with the materials and the textures. Now, I've already done that. Let me hit cancel, and I'm going to jump over to Navisworks. So I've exported that to FBX. And then, now Navisworks, this, this does clash detection. It does 4D and 5D simulation. We can ag aggregate files from many different CAD platforms and, and create a, uh, a BIM model. Another thing it does very well is it creates stereo panoramas. If I go to open here, right there, you can see the FBX that I exported. I've, I've already opened that in Navisworks, which created a Navisworks file just to make things quick here. I'm going to grab that. Otherwise it might take, you know, two or three minutes to do this. But if I open up one that's already been cached, we can see that. So you can see the, the model comes right over here to, um, Infoworks and it retains all of the materials that it has in, um, that it, that it, uh, that it brought over from Infoworks. So here in Navisworks, we have everything. We haven't lost anything. What I want to do here is position myself where I'd like to be standing in this model, um, in my virtual reality environment. Now, since I have be my roundabout here at the top of the hill and I have, you know, the park site and the playground here off in the distance. Maybe I don't want to be standing at sidewalk level because it's, you know, it'd be a little bit hard to see that. So what I'm going to do is, you know, kind of, I'm going to kind of uh, levitate here over the, uh, over the intersection. Let me pan this over a touch. I'm going to kind of levitate over the intersection here so that as I'm viewing this in 3D, I'll kind of be up off the ground. So that's all we have to do. Open the model, position ourselves where we want to be, and then I'll choose render and then I'll choose render in cloud. I would like to render the 3D view, uh, current, the current view. Uh, for output type, I'm going to choose stereo panorama. Now this is a cloud render service. Uh, you can see that currently I can render a stereo panorama using the default settings and it's no cloud credits whatsoever. Not a, uh, not a charge. So I could go through and I could, you know, render it, take a look. I could make adjustments if I want to. And then if I wanted to dial this up all the way, I could say, make this final, uh, advanced exposure. And then the highest resolution be 2046 pixels. It's about 13 credits, which translates to about, uh, $13. And we can see it's going to take less than 10 minutes to create that rendering. I can click and it'll email me when it's, uh, when it's finished. I would then choose start rendering and it would upload this to the cloud and, and take care of everything it has to do. I am going, when it's done, I'll get an email then that's got a hyperlink in it. And if I click the hyperlink, it will show me the rendering. That hyperlink would take me to the render gallery, which is a shortcut to what I just clicked on there in the application. Um, by clicking render gallery in Navisworks, I can go right there and we'll jump into this. There we go. I'll choose overall model here. And from here, I can view the models that have been rendered, uh, you know, for this project, uh, to this point, we know by the little, uh, kind of the little, you know, goggles or binoculars there that this is a stereo panorama. I'm trying to reduce, uh, pixelization here as much as possible. This is a 360 degree panorama in its current state. I can click and drag this um, to, to rotate around and, and see the entire environment. I can look up, down, all around, any, any place I want to. If I want to view this in 3D, I'll click this share button. And then I would make sure that share via link is turned on. I could then choose view shared link. And here's my hyperlink right here. That's really all you need to, uh, to view this in 3D uh, on, a, on a smartphone. If you... Um, I could take this link and I could copy it and I could send it to you in an email. If you view that email on your phone, tap that hyperlink, you can then view this in 3D. Likewise, it gives me the ability of using a QR code. If you have a QR reader on your smartphone, you could do this right now. If you want to, you could scan that QR code and it will load the uh, rendering on your machine. No special software necessary other than the QR reader. Uh, now, if you're, if you are seeing that it's uh, wanting you to purchase something or an ad or something like that, that's your QR reader. Um, 
because there's, there's nothing needed for this whatsoever. Now I'm going to, let's try this here. I'm going to see if I can simulate this on screen. Let me minimize this. And this will minimize some of the things that we have going on here. And I'm going to launch this application called Reflector. Reflector will allow me to display my uh, phone on my screen. So now that I've got that up, let me pull up my phone here. And we'll see if we can send this over. There we go. So when it's, uh, when I first open my phone up, I'm viewing it, you know, I'm holding my phone naturally vertically. It, it tells me that all you have to do is turn the phone to a horizontal position. And you can see now I have that stereo pair. So if you ever had a ViewMaster as a kid, um, you know, the ViewMaster was just a static image. With this, now that now that this is on my phone, I could put my phone into a Google Cardboard, or there's a, a ton of uh, VR devices, low-cost VR devices that you can snap your phone into. It's it's basically a holder with uh, with some lenses on the front that allow you to view your phone kind of like binoculars. And uh, this is a full 3D experience, so um, very very compelling. And um, you know, with the uh, with the collection. We can, we can very easily create these type of uh, visualizations. Uh, you could use these for, for design meetings. Let me pop back out of this. And I am going to return to my PowerPoints here. There we go. So let's, uh, let's do this from the current slide. Perfect. So just to, just to wrap up that last concept there with the, with the QR codes, I mean, it's, you could take and print the QR codes on, on business cards. You could put the QR codes in the newspaper. Um, you could have Google cardboards at public meetings and you could put the QR codes on a PowerPoint presentation. So anybody that's at the meeting, uh, can, can, you know, not only see your design, but experience your design, uh, in 3d, um, you know, physically standing within the, uh, within the environment. <clears throat> So today we have looked at a ton of concepts with respect to visualizing our infrastructure projects. Uh, generally speaking, we took a project that was we were working on in Civil 3D. We exported that over to InfraWorks, both the surface and the geometry. Um, very easy to update either of those if the, if the design changes. Once we got those into InfraWorks, we were then adding uh, landscaping and city furniture, people, cars, street signs, things like that. Uh, I showed you how you could use AutoCAD in the collection to model custom content in the event what you're looking for in InfraWorks isn't in the library. If it's not available, you can always create your own or grab some online. Once you get the model into a state where you're ready to create visualizations, you could use the model itself as an exhibit uh, using bookmarks, or we could create still images that are suitable for the web or magazine. Uh, we could create fly-through animations in a matter of minutes. I mean, if you've ever created animation with another application, you know that that could be time consuming, especially in an application where it wants to render each frame individually. InfraWorks allows us to do it in just, you know, two minutes. We also looked at how quickly we could create a low cost uh, VR experience without any special hardware or, uh, or software necessary other than the collection. Uh, and it's, it's VR that, that anybody can view using their smartphone. So that being said, um, I'm going to be sticking around to take questions at the close of the session. I want to uh, thank you guys for attending and, uh, and I hope to get a chance to work with you guys again in the future. Thanks a lot. See ya.